Welcome everyone to this webinar on engineering design, simulation and optimization in the cloud with Onshape, SimScale and Esteco. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Valerio Marra and I'm the VP of Marketing at SimScale and I will be your moderator today. Today's presenters are Aaron Magnin, Partner Success Manager at PTC, Steve Lenay, Application Engineering Manager at SimScale and Gabriele De Grassi, Support Engineer at Esteco. So let me introduce the speakers to you. Aaron attended the University of Nevada, where he obtained a degree in mechanical engineering, and after a decade as an application engineer and technical marketer, is now the partner success manager at Onshape. Steve is an application engineering manager at SimScale. He has a master's degree in mechanical engineering and a PhD in materials science. Before joining SimScale, he worked in aerospace design and engineering simulation. And Gabriele De Grassi graduated in mechanical engineering from the University of Trieste, and he worked as a quality engineer and structural engineer before joining the engineering and support team at the stake. Right after my welcome and introduction, introduction, and it's almost over, today's speaker will present in the following order, Steve from SimScale, Aaron from Onshape, and then Gabriele from Esteco. They will present a design simulate optimized workflow applied to a real world case, and the case will feature the design optimization of a scientific pump. After the three presentations and live demos, we will run a Q&A section, uh, and it also we will discuss and, uh, and show you, you can get to try the, the, the three software that we will present to you yourself. Right, and please do not ask, do not hesitate to ask any questions you may have. There's a chat box in the in the webinar panel, so you can ask questions anytime. I'll keep an eye on those, and then we'll ask them during the Q and A. And now let's start with the first presenter, uh, Steve. The floor is yours. Thank you, Valerio. So, what is the application that we're looking at today? Well, we're going to be looking at how shape optimization can be used in conjunction with CFD to optimize a pump design. We're going to introduce you to how this can be done in your product development life cycle. And we'll obviously have the experts from Onshape, SimScale and Esteco to take you through this. The only technical platform that can actually achieve this sort of simulation on the cloud is SimScale. And the only CAD platform that can achieve this sort of capability in the cloud is Onshape. And we're going to be looking at a real world case here of the optimization of a pump. So we're going to go from the CAD, which is designed in Onshape. And we've got a parameterized model here where there's seven geometric parameters that can be altered. So each of those CAD designs will be generated in the cloud in Onshape and then analyzed in the cloud in SimScale. There will be a incompressible CFD analysis conducted on each of those models. And then the results of that CFD analysis will be analyzed using Esteco software. An obje objective-driven optimization is set up in Volta and Mode Frontier to intelligently choose which parameters to change and optimize the design for the maximum efficiency. So this is obviously one straight line in the workflow, but there's of course a feedback loop here. So from as Deco, we can then choose which parameters to alter to optimize the design. And then the next geometry will be run in simulation. For this specific CAD, we've got seven parameters. Say, for example, we vary 10 values per parameter. That would give us a matrix of 1 million simulations that we would have to run to analyze the whole design space. But using Esteco software to optimize this, we can leverage the capabilities of the cloud and only run 65 of those geometries to get to the optimal result. In fact, all of those 65 geometries could be run in parallel using SimScale. All of this is performed with SimScale and on shape in the cloud and orchestrated via Volta and Mode Frontier. 
So that's an introduction to the project that we're going to look at today and the collaboration between these three companies. Now let me give you a brief introduction to SimScale. So what do we do at SimScale? Well, we created the world's first engineering simulation platform in the cloud. So with traditional simulation tools, there's HPC hardware that has to be purchased and maintained. And this is accompanied by high fixed costs for that software and hardware. Also, these tools are generally written for specialists. So there's a barrier to actually learn and maximize the value from these tools. With SimScale, we provide a solution that requires no expensive hardware to be purchased and also uh, no software to be installed and maintained. It's cost efficient with uh, no fixed costs and a usage-based pricing system. And it's very easy to use with seamless collaboration and world-class support. So let's dig into this a bit more deeply and have a look at how this can support the product lifecycle. So from the concept phase of a product through to the design and engineering, production and operation, simulation is traditionally conducted in the design validation stage. With traditional simulation tools, there's the on-premise hardware, there may be some middleware for scheduling jobs on a high-performance cluster, and then there's various software seats that need to be added on top of that and training and support for the various engineers. Because the, this whole system is obviously uh, quite substantial, simulation is used at the late stage in the design process to validate designs. But a lot of benefit can be had from iterating the design much earlier in the design process where the cost of change is lower and where you can gain a much better design at the end of the process by iterating and choosing the optimal design. There's obviously um, many other areas where you can use simulation like design space exploration, advanced manufacturing, predictive maintenance, and feeding back information to a digital twin from production to simulation. So with SimScale, we empower companies to do this early stage iterative design by taking care of many of the uh, more complex sides of setting up a simulation system. All of the infrastructure, so the HPC orchestration, et cetera, is taken care of by SimScale. We manage all of that on the cloud. On top of that, we provide simulation technologies to be able to solve multiple physics that you want to simulate. So the physics ranges from FEA, structural applications, thermal applications, to CFD as well. So we cover a very wide range of uh, different physics with the different simulation technologies that are available on our platform. So SimScale is a SaaS application. It's fully collaborative, so there's no uh, exchange of large CAD files or large files. Multiple people from different parts of the globe can all log into the same projects and work together because everything is stored, managed, solved, and post-processed in the cloud. We have a API layer that allows access to all of these different uh, physics and simulation capabilities. And that's obviously what we've made use of here in this project. And we have a graphical user interface that allows for all of these different simulation physics to be run on the platform. So today, the parts of the platform that we're actually using are the finite volume method uh, simulation for internal flows. And we're leveraging the ability to run all of that 
through the API. So from a stacker, they can choose a geometry that they want to create in Onshape. That geometry is passed into SimScale, simulated, and then the results are fed directly out through the API. So that's those main elements. So that's the introduction. I just want to switch out quickly to SimScale to show you how the platform works before I hand over to Aaron for the Onshape side. So SimScale is completely web-based. All you need to access SimScale is a web browser. So here I'm using a browser to log into my SimScale dashboard and have a look at the different projects that I've got. From here, uh, we can see all of the projects that I've been running, a summary of my account activity, and we can obviously search for projects of interest in here, and everything is managed and stored nicely for us. So I'm going to have a look at this pump project. This is obviously uh, the project that we're looking at today, and I can see a summary of the project here and open that directly in the workbench to analyze my results or set up a new simulation. So we can see the geometry that was imported from Onshape. And here um, I can see a simulation that was run earlier and I can analyze those results directly in here to get some insights out and uh, have a look at how this pump is actually performing. Obviously this um, simulation was run completely through the API. So for today's project, there was actually no need to come into SimScale to actually look at it. But purely to show you how the platform works, um, I just want to show you how we can post process the result in here. So we could have a look at some, some different results here, analyze the pressure distribution within the pump and have a look at the performance. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you as a very quick introduction. And um, I'll now hand, hand over to Aaron from Onshape. Wonderful, thank you, Steve. That was a great presentation. So let me go ahead and share my screen. You should be seeing it and it does appear so. Um, considering that, you know, there's three different companies um, advertising this presentation i did need to start with a little bit of an introduction to onshape in case you know some of you are not currently using uh this cad tool um so if you already have a cad system in place you're probably wondering why you should consider switching to onshape and, and actually steve hit on a lot of these same points but let me reiterate uh the value of a, a cloud native tool um with the current subject matter, it's a clear cut decision. You, you simply cannot do the optimization workflow that we're highlighting without the API, the parameterization uh, that, that, that Onshape enables. But beyond that, you have to consider the challenges that you face on a day to day. Um, is, are your challenges today related to the design of the products? Probably not. I mean, in all honesty, you can make any model in any CAD system. But today's engineering challenges are, are beyond design. It's things like you know, accessing design data remotely, um, internal and external collaboration, cumbersome updates and admin. Uh, I mean, we've all been there. A new release comes out. You, your IT team spends all weekend uh, updating to the new, the new system. Um, Add-on purchases for, for things like PDM and, and uh, the, all of these things uh, add pain, expense, and uh, time consuming. It's, it's time consuming for for IT departments and engineers. And these are the the challenges that that when we set out to make on shape, this is what we wanted to address. So, with that in mind, um, I did want to touch on this fact: um, is that Onshape is the number one fastest growing CAD system as reported by engineering.com. We're not just pulling this out of uh, thin air. Um, with that in mind, we've been growing at a rate seven times that of the, the average uh, CAD tool out there. Um, and this, is, this has helped us to accumulate over 2 million active users and it's climbing. Um, and, and part of that is related to, you know, what's what we've been experiencing in the last two years, a pandemic, people working from home, 
uh, returns to office is getting delayed and delayed. And, and I, I mean, I'm curious how many of you are working in the offices again, uh, or if you're you're still working at home. Um, so why are why are people switching to Onshape? It's it's all those challenges that I touched on at the beginning. There, it's it's the ability to overcome those challenges uh, with a native CAD solution. Um, Native, native cloud means all your data and tools are in one place in the cloud. There's no downloads, there's no installation, there's no files, there's no copies. Uh, you have the ability to do you know, global real-time uh, collaboration with a single source of truth. There's no copying of files and emailing them or putting them, them on FTP or paying for VPN services and managing that. Um, there's a lower total cost of ownership. Um, because it is so straightforward, there's no upfront licensing costs. There's a subscription, and that's that's it. I mean, uh, there's 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 a lot of savings to be had by by being able to work so flexibly uh, with whatever you know operating system that you choose to work from. And hardware requirements are really pretty simple when you're when you're working from a cloud application. Um, now. I did want to just focus on one of these challenges that, that Onshape helps overcome, specific to this, you know, this case of optimizing this, this pump. Um, and this is the way that we address configurations. And in this GIF uh, Steve so nicely put together, um, you can see, you know, they're they're varying some of these configurations or these variables. And I wanted to just jump into Onshape and show you a little bit about how these configurations are made and kind of introduce you to the product if you've never seen it before. So let's just switch over here and you can see I'm actually live in Onshape right now. I'm gonna take a look at this impeller, um, sorry, pump. Um, and I'm gonna select, you know, just one of the components on here or one of the features, let's say. And you can see this is, you know, when I select it, it cross highlights it in the, the feature tree that you see over there. I can right click and I'd say edit extrude 10. And it takes me to, you know, you know the, the details that go into actually creating this, this um, feature and when I select on the depth this is where you can see it's actually calling out that that variable that uh, the, the the seven different variables that Stephen touched on uh, at the, the introduction there so you can see this is how it's actually going to be driving some of these changes if I jump over to my configuration tree over here you can see that we are able to to add those seven different variables and in, in this nice concise short um, display uh, if you were to try to do this with a traditional cat tool you know I think I think Steve said there's a million different variables if you if you consider changing each one of these seven values ten different times so we're able to to accomplish a very complicated um, configuration uh, in a very manageable space and I'm gonna actually kind of expand this out I was hiding it before but this is where you go if you wanted to, to try you know maybe we want to try nine impellers um, nine different blades on the impellers or you know change the diffuser angle or, or length and in any one of these I can set to, to, to certain values you can actually set limits to avoid you know going beyond a, a reasonable extent I mean I don't know if 30 uh, impeller blades is common but uh, it, it, it's possible it's something that that with our API and this this parameterization of this design uh, Azteco and, and sim SimScale are able to access that data and optimize the design. I'm going to do one quick thing here. I'm just going to search and find those impeller blades. I'm kind of focusing on that. Um, we'll select to edit it, and here you can see this instant count, and you can see it actually rolls back to that earlier design phase, and so you can actually see a little, little bit better. Um, in this case, I haven't actually set uh, the variable here all I need to do is just right click and set it to that number of blades and then it's going to actually use that and take it back to whatever software is trying to access this data so just a quick introduction to to on shape um, but with that in mind and uh, that covered I'm going to actually pass it over to Gabriella now and he's going to show you how he was able to optimize this uh, with the design that we presented in, in the simulation that Steve set up Okay, thank you for your presentation. Uh, let me select my screen now. Okay. 
can you see the screen? Looks good, Gabriele, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, as Aaron did, I will start with a very brief presentation of Esteco and about what we do. So, Esteco is an independent software company and our main skills are numerical optimization and simulation process and data management. Uh, we have different sites, different offices, uh, and our headquarter is in Trieste, Italy, but we also have one office in Novi, Michigan, and one in Pune, India. Um, and having them spread all over the world, let's say, uh, helps us in reaching our customers uh, wherever they may be. Um, the products that we're going to use today are Mod Frontier and Volta. Uh, we're going to use them for the demonstration, obviously, with the uh, models uh, developed by um, the Onshape and Simscale's efforts. Um, while Mod Frontier is uh, the desktop solution for simulation process automation and design optimization, Volta is an innovative web-based platform for simulation process and data management and design optimization. But let's see now a little, more, a little bit more in details uh, what I'm referring to. Mod Frontier allows you to automate the evaluation of your multidisciplines parametric models, um, which are controlled by input parameters and whose response is represented by output parameters. Um, in particular, for the example that you saw from, um, uh, from Aaron and Steve, um, we had different input parameters uh, as geometrical parameters, uh, but you will see that we will also use as an input parameter um, the, um, the flow uh, of the pump. Um, so different type of parameters can be used uh, to uh, control your parametric model. Um, then the, uh, the automated process can then be used to optimize the model uh, depending on a certain objective that you select or multiple objectives possibly, Model Frontier will take care of finding the best results uh, using one of its optimization algorithms. Um, also, the resources can be exploited at their best by allowing parallel computations and also external clusters if needed. Um, furthermore, if after you finish your optimization, you need to better understand your results and what do they mean for you, uh, they can be directly analyzed using the available post-processing environment. With Mod Frontier, we will build so our automated process for the centrifugal pump simulation, and then we will define the optimization strategy, selecting the algorithm and uh, defining some um, parameters for the optimization. Then the execution and the post-processing will be performed uh, on the web-based platform Volta. So, as previewed, Volta is a collaborative web-based platform uh, and it is designed for simulation-driven product development uh, and it's built around different technologies uh, for each step of the simulation process. The core of Volta is the simulation data management and it's the place where you can store, organize and share all your simulation models, files and projects. Then, with the simulation process integration and automation technology, you can integrate every model and every simulation software within a single simulation workflow. In the end, design optimization, HPC and cloud, and simulation data analytics technologies will allow you to optimize your model, to distribute your computations, and to post-process your results, all directly from your laptop browser. So before moving to the live demo, let's see what's the big picture for the next steps. Um, the whole optimization process, including modeling and simulation, can be easily mapped using the business process management tool uh, that is available in Volta. Uh, and the result of this optimization process is pictured here. You can see that uh, the operation of uh, model creation and simulation model creation together with also um, the writing of the API script using both APIs from Onshape and Simscale, uh, these phases are completed. So now it's Esteco's turn uh, to 
go on with the whole process, the overall process. And based on the script obtained from the joint effort of Onshape and SimScale, we will now build the automated process workflow in Mod Frontier. Then again, define the optimization strategy, upload the whole project to Volta, and then uh, perform the optimization on dedicated resources. After that, after it is over, of course, I will not uh, make you wait until the whole optimization is over, uh, but we will post-process the results and share them possibly <clears throat> with our partners. So now let's move on to the demo. Um, whenever you access Mod Frontier, uh, the first environment we meet is the home page, and here you can find some uh, template workflows uh, that are useful for a beginner. Uh, we can access some rec recent projects, or you can access uh, some useful tools like the user guide or our website, uh, where you have multiple resources available. Uh, but let's just move to the creation of our project. This is the workflow editor, and this is where we will create, uh, as you can guess, our workflow, uh, our automated workflow. And in particular, for the, the, the goal of this demo, we will here create the integration with Onshape and SimScale. Uh, in order to do that, we will need the EasyDriver node that is something that is able to embed the script that was developed by the joint effort of our partners um, containing the APIs of, um, of both softwares. Uh, and in that, we will need to identify where the input parameters are defined. And you can see here the blade angle, for example, but which is a geometrical parameter, but also the flow rate, which is a um, simulation parameter, uh, they can be uh, modified, their values can be modified by defining what are called replacement rules. So basically, Mod Frontier will just replace the value written here with a new value um, that is defined by the algorithm or uh, by, um, anyway, Mod Frontier if you're uh, trying to evaluate a predefined sequence of designs, for example. Um, for uh, avoid, I will avoid to define that for all of them. You will see in the optimization the result for all the, um, the parameters. Uh, but anyway, you can imagine that the same operation can be done also for all the other parameters. Instead, we will move on to the next session here, which is the driver session. And this is where you just type uh, what, what will be run from the command line to properly execute the script that was modified with the new values for the input parameters. So once we did that, we can move to the output template uh, environment, which is where you need to tell Mod Frontier how to recognize the results. In particular, in this case, uh, the results will be stored in a results.csv file, uh, and the structure will always be, always be the same. So you, we will have a list of values, and Mod Frontier will recognize the structure as a vector structure, and you can see the preview of the values found. In particular, it's very important the, to find the last value, the 16th, uh, because this one represents the efficiency, which is what we're going to maximize as the objective of the optimization. So. We now defined the, um, the model, the parameters of our model. And what we need to do is now to link these parameters embedded in the model to the nodes for parameters, which will be um, reported in the workflow. And for this purpose, I'm now performing what is called introspection uh, using the parameter chooser menu. And this will automatically link my model parameter to the workflow parameters. So these are sort of uh, placeholders for the values that are used to exchange data with the process node uh, of the integration. 
Um, another thing that I want to add to our um, workflow is the output attachment node, which is what we will use to extract the, um, the screenshot of the velocity that is created using the dedicated API in SimScale. This is something that is very useful because you can directly from Volta, we will see later how, uh, you can directly see the result of your uh, model evaluation by just uh, checking the screenshot. Of course, the API in this case is very simple because you use just a velocity screenshot at the velocity field, but you can of course uh, extract other and more useful uh, screenshots even from uh, on shape, for example, if you're just interested in the uh, geometry of your model. So before moving to Volta, we need to uh, define our strategy and we can just rename it as optimization. And for that purpose, we need some modules here that help us defining the strategy. Um, and we need to set them as variables because as parameters they will just be kept as constant and for the blade angle we will set some boundaries from a boundary from 10 um, degrees to 50 degrees. As output domain we will consider them all as variables and in particular if you remember we will need for the maximum efficiency to consider as the expression of our objective the 16th um, component and we will uh, try to maximize that. For this purpose we will select in this case PILOT as an algorithm which is uh, uh, an algorithm that we internally developed and we can set for as an example 50 designs as total number uh, that will be um, analyzed and uh, it exploits meta models to speed up the, the optimization and of course reduce the number of designs required to reach the optimal um, the optimal result of the optimization so in uh, if you're interested in running that locally you could just run project but in this case we're interested in doing that from Volta so we can access to Volta and save it as new so we can call it process workflow and we can save it inside our team so on shape sim scale and steco team which is now created in Volta and that allows the sharing of data or files of scripts or whatever you need uh, in between the interested persons. So now everything is updated and we can now move to Volta. We can access our team here and you can find the process workflow that we just defined. So if we want to run the optimization we just need to use the plan that we just created we can select one of the available queues uh, where you have the dedicated resources for um, your processes uh, and you can just click run. You can edit your session with the name or whatever tags you need to recognize it and you can monitor your optimization from here. However, uh, since a lot of time would be required for the whole optimization, I will just show you the results we obtained from another optimization. So this is the Vault Advisor, which is the environment where you can post-process your data, in particular your data are, are contained in this table. Um, and what you can see from here is that we have a scatter, um, a scatter bubble chart uh, containing our results with the, the, yeah, the efficiency, so our objective plotted on the y-axis. And uh, also the color depends on the diffuser length, one another variable, and the blade angle represents the dimension. Um, the interesting thing is that, and maybe you have noticed, 
uh, the screenshots that were extracted from each model evaluation can be seen directly from here and they can change together with the selection of the design. So without showing you all of them, <laughs> uh, since we're interested in maximizing the efficiency, I will just show you the best one, which seems to be the number 50. If you want to investigate more uh, how the design number 50, uh, how it is shaped like, we can move to the radar chart, for example, and the <coughs> type design number 50 and you can see the values of the parameters for the design 50. So if we see that and we are fine <coughs> with the choice of our uh, let's say best result we can finally say we obtained our optimized centrifugal pump so after model defi definition simulation definition uh, automated process and optimization, we finally reached our goal. And we can share the results with our partners, hoping to see the product on market soon. Um, and that's all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for your presentation. And now it's, the, you know, it's time to take some questions from the uh, audience. You know, we'll do our best to answer to all your all of the questions that you have in the remaining time. And you know, we will get back to you in case you know we we we, we can't. All right, so uh, we have similar questions more or less for uh, at least now in the beginning. I'm, I'm getting the same question, which is uh, we can, how can we, we can try, you know, the three software that we, we showed and, uh, and maybe I'll start, you know, with Steve and then Aaron and then Gabriele, you guys can explain the audience how to get in. So Steve, you, you, you should be first, go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks Valerio. So yeah, that's, that's a great question. We have various ways that you can trial the software. If you're a, um, a hobbyist user, you can use our community version of SimScale. All you need to do is go to simscale.com and you can set up an account and uh, start using the community version. That is a bit limited. You don't have access to everything, obviously. Um, you don't have access to some of the simulation types and the advanced capabilities and you can't use it for commercial use. But from simscale.com, you can also request uh, to be connected to, to us, and then uh, we can reach out to you. An application engineer uh, can take you through the software, and we can see how Simscale can add value to your organization. Thanks, Valeria. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Aaron, what about Onshape? Yeah, to, to get an Onshape trial, Probably the easiest way is just to go to Google and search on Shape Professional Trial. I believe we have a slide coming up soon that'll have some the actual URL that you can go directly to it. It's a 14-day trial. It uh, gives you all the, the same capabilities that any professional uh, subscriber would get. In addition, uh, there is a free version that you could use as well. Uh, the one caveat to that is that uh, any of your documents would be public, so uh, you'd be sharing them with every other Onshape user out there. So that's it for me. Thank you, Aaron. Gabriele? Uh, as from my side, um, on it from you can try both uh, Mod Frontier and Volta. Volta is a, uh, requires some more time to set up the, the installation. Uh, while Mod Frontier, if you're interested in uh, getting in touch with uh, uh, is something that you can install on your computer um, and you can directly request a, de a demo at info at um, However, if you're interested in Volta instead, uh, you can still contact info at esteco.com and my colleagues uh, from the professional services uh, will be uh, happy to help you set up the installation. Uh, anyway, you can find all the informations uh, for in our website. So esteco.product.com. Um, Got it. Thank you so much. Uh, and then, you know, since we were talking about uh, the, the cloud, you know, this product uh, um, harness the power and the flexibility of the cloud. Uh, one question that comes natural is uh, when there are updates, how does that work, right? And I get this question because if you have a desktop software, you have to download a huge file, install it, and then sometimes the things don't don't go <laughs> as they should, and then you have to reinstall the OS version. So the question for the audience is how that works for all three software. And uh, yeah, we can start from Steve again. 
Okay, yeah, great question. Um, obviously, with the legacy software, release cycles are such a huge thing. Um, the features get released on a specific schedule. You find out what's coming and you have to install all that uh, software on your servers, make sure it's ready for production, etc. With SimScale, we're pushing out updates all the time. Uh, when these in updates impact our current user base, we obviously communicate uh, what is being updated. Um, but some of the smaller things, you just don't notice them happening from one day to the next. You log in to SimScale um, and there's been slight improvements and changes. So that's one of the fantastic things about um, SaaS software. You, you don't have to wait for a specific release cycle. The updates, as soon as they're ready, are pushed out uh, to the software. Thanks. Aaron? Yeah, uh, for everything Steve says, I could pretty much just say ditto. Uh, <laughs> uh, the updates happen unbeknownst to you. Uh, the, the only indication is probably the new features that you'll find and, and you'll get a, a small pop-up that tells you there's been a new release. We do release uh, about every three weeks and I think we're coming up on 150 releases pretty soon here. I, uh, I think they're planning some marketing push related to that, but... <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you. And then Gabriele? Uh, instead, on, on our side, uh, we have a slightly uh, lower frequency of update of the products, but anyway, we come, uh, come out with three different new releases uh, regularly separated each year. So it, for each year, you will find Mod Frontier uh, release number one, two, and three, one in March, one almost uh, mid-summer uh, and the other one um, we just recently released it in the previous two weeks so yeah uh, you just need to to download the installer and then uh, update the software thank you awesome awesome thank you um, there's there's many questions about and this is interesting uh, because I, I guess it's not a problem for us, but it may be with other tools. Okay, can you simulate this application on this other, for example, um, you know, an engine or a, a biomedical device? And I think, you know, I think this time we can start with Aaron, right? If there are any geometric limitations, and then the question for Steve is, is there anything that you cannot simulate in SimScale because of the size or complexity of the resulting mesh? And the next, uh, then the last Gabriele to say, is there, you know, does it really matter how big the model is? So I think we can start with Aaron. Yeah, I mean, large large model management has always been a difficult subject for on-premise. I mean, you're basically limited by your hardware, right? So people will spend quite a lot to try to improve their performance. What you'll find with Onshape is that that uh, you can work with some extremely large models. Um, you can work on pretty much any design, as I mentioned in my presentation. I mean. The design part's not really the limiting factor these days. It's it's um, it's more the 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 other challenges that we face. Um, but yeah, um, we are we're we're working to improve our large assembly uh, management as well. There's always room for improvement there. So, all right, thank you, uh, Steve. Yeah, so you can handle very large models in SimScale. Um, as with any simulation platform, the limitation comes more down to the level of detail than the actual uh, size of the model itself. So um, obviously defeaturing is still a thing um, that is recommended for simulations in SimScale and we have embedded capability within the SimScale platform to be able to help you with that. So you can edit your CAD within SimScale to remove certain features and uh, split models up Obviously, larger models, so long as you've got some symmetry, can be run symmetrically so that you're saving computation and mesh. But essentially, with so much computation, computational power at your fingertips with SimScale in the cloud, there's uh, many capabilities. Right. Thank you, Steve. And, and Gabriele? Uh, regarding the size of the models, uh, Mod Frontier and Volta both are able to handle uh, every dimension of, of file as uh, as much as you have enough space on, on your storage. Um, the limit might be on the softwares, but it's not a limit, it's just a different way of handling different softwares. So yeah, 
uh, for example, as you saw uh, with uh, Onshape and SimScale, we were able to just easily uh, implement, um, sorry, integrate their models with some just some scripting, and then uh, the the software uh, handled everything else. So yeah, that's most of it. Got it. Thank you. And then I, and now I have specific questions for each one of you. Uh, so I'll start with Aaron again. Uh, so Aaron, we need to shed some light on this. Is, is that true that the SolidWorks founders started on shape? Yeah, as a matter of fact, there must be a, a cat historian out there. Um, <laughs> SolidWorks was started by John McElhaney and, and John Hirschtick. And so they have a pedigree in, uh, you know, CAD development. SolidWorks is a, is a pretty good tool, but uh, they saw, you know, where, it, where it's hitting limitations and uh, that's where Onshape came from. And another little fun fact, John Hirschtick got uh, some of his seed money from being on the MIT Blackjack, Blackjack Club. So you can look that one up. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and for you, Steve, uh, you know, the question is if we, can handle more than one simulation at a time. And, and I think, you know, what the audience means is if we can, you know, we embrace simulations, multi-physics simulation as an approach. So we have different physics under the hood. And then to be specific, there was a question about if we can uh, simulate together conduction and convection. Heat, heat transfer then. Okay, thanks Valeria. I lost you for a second at the end, um, but I think you said, can we do, multi-physics including heat transfer Correct. So, and um, conduction and convection together yes okay fantastic so um so yes in on SimScale, uh, you can run unlimited projects in parallel um, that's one of the fantastic things about being able to use the cloud when you want to run multiple simulations so maybe you want to do a design study or for a pump we can actually do automated pump curves where you set off 20 or 40 different uh, configurations and run those in parallel on the cloud. Um, a new VM is started automatically by SimScale for each one of those simulations and you get the results back uh, in real time as they complete. And um, yes, of course, so we have many different physics available to us um, within SimScale. Uh, some of those can be coupled together, um, like um, FEA and um, thermal shock analysis. For others, you can obviously run those in parallel and combine the results. Uh, and we can combine radiation and heat transfer together in thermal simulations. So there's a, a lot of capability available there. All right. Thanks. Thank Th thank you so much. And and Gabriele, this is a, a quite technical one, so I'll just read it as it is, so I don't change the meaning of it. Uh, this is, uh, let me see, let me find it again. Okay. Is there a node-based fine-tuning function to improve best variance in the workflow? Uh, so can you repeat the first part maybe? <laughs> yeah. The so is there a node-based fine-tuning function to improve how the best variants are found, right, in the workflow. I believe this is an optimization question for what happened in, in Volta and Mod Frontier. Yeah, basically the optimization is objective driven. So as in the example, uh, we saw that we maximize the efficiency. Basically the algorithm is able to uh, recognize the output value um, and depending on the inputs that were used for obtaining that output, um, it basically changes its direction uh, in order to improve this uh, this objective. Uh, of course, if there are multiple objectives, you will have a, you will require a multi-objective uh, optimization algorithm. Uh, if you have multiple input variables, then you will require something able to handle them all. Um, so yeah, we have different algorithms uh, that are able to handle different problems. Um, and also depending on the, um, the time available for uh, the, the customer. So we have different algorithms for different needs. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a, a complicated answer, but it's also uh, a complicated matter to, um, to just sum it up in a few words. So yeah, uh, if, if the person is interested, maybe uh, he can contact us and then we can discuss about that, that more in details, uh, maybe in front of a demo, of, uh, of a demo license. 
Right, right. Makes sense. Thank, thank you so much. So th this is all the time that we had for today. And uh, we have one more slide, but before I'll, uh, I'll take it and I'll present it to the audience, I want to, you know, thank the presenters again for answering the questions, for presenting, and also the audience for uh, for staying with us. It was it was a lot of you uh, guys that uh, uh, logged in today. All right. If we could go to the next slide, then uh, this is, you know, we, we showed it already, but this is how you could, uh, you, you can get in touch with us. It's uh, either through uh, you know, for SimScale is our website or, or an email. Uh, for Esteco, you have two emails that you can, uh, you know, uh, write down and get in touch with. You will also have, get, have, have access to the recording after the webinar. And then for Onshape, we have, you know, two, two links there share, uh, shared for the trial and, and for the demo. Uh, so once again, uh, thank you, Steve, Aaron, Gabriele. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the audience. and. Uh, Please, you know, you had lots of questions. We get back to you, and feel free to ask more again via email or via the website. And again, you can uh, uh, try the the software for, uh, you know, by yourself. And we could even, uh, you know, share what we worked on to, um, today, so you can take a look at it by yourself. Uh, thanks again very much, and uh, talk soon. Bye. Thanks for hosting, Valeria. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.